Huh, should I start a YouTube channel? Will you other chimps subscribe to me? I hope they go bananas. I just need a catchy name. Hmm, I'm cool, I should call myself Arctic Monkey. Huh, what is that? This human again? I've seen her for months now. Okay, we can be friends, I guess. Will you subscribe to me though? This scene did not only depict my creativity, but also one of the most important moments in modern primatology. It showed the moment when the first chimpanzee gained trust in Jane Goodall. From this point on, Jane Goodall could start to make her revolutionary scientific discoveries. After David Greybeard accepted her, other chimps started to trust her as well, and she could gain insights into their daily lives. Jane Goodall, of course, became later one of the most influential scientists in our modern times. But what did she actually achieve? What are Jane Goodall's scientific discoveries? My name is Ken Steinig and today we will talk about Jane Goodall and what we know about our hairy relatives, the chimpanzees. We should start by talking about Jane Goodall's early life and how she became a scientist. I think it's the best if we then go chronologically through her major scientific discoveries and also discuss some more recent publications. In this manner we can see how influential her original theories have been and what we know of chimpanzees today. Valerie Jane Morris Goodall was born in 1933 in England. As a child she developed a fascination for animals and her father gave her a stuffed chimpanzee. She became more and more intrigued by Africa but did not have much money and so she was unable to afford university. When an opportunity arose to visit a friend in Kenya, she saved money and booked a flight. And it was in Africa when she met Louis Leakey, a legendary anthropologist. Just as a side note, Leakey was one of the main figures in determining that humans originated in Africa. Leakey was truly impressed by this young woman. Not only by her enthusiasm, but also by her knowledge of natural history. So she became his assistant and her scientific career started. In 1960, she arrived at Gombe's Dream Chimpanzee Reserve in what is now Tanzania. Here she could show her scientific dedication. Normally chimpanzees flee at the sight of an intruder and so she spent months just observing them. And then the first chimpanzee gained trust in her and she named him David Greybeard. You remember the chimpanzee from the beginning of this video? More and more chimps then started to get very close to her and she could start her scientific discoveries. Very early, Jane Goodall observed that chimpanzees have character traits and different personalities. In one publication, she describes that chimpanzees are breastfed during the first five to six years of their lives. During the final stages of breastfeeding, some youngsters might become depressed and revert to earlier forms of infantile behavior. One young chimpanzee called Flint was weaned early at four and a half years old. He went through a period of depression, during which he did not groom with his mother, had wild tantrums and hit the ground. With her vivid depictions, Jane Goodall drew a global audience. Her descriptions of chimpanzee personalities were widely read and are still relevant today. In 2017, a study aimed to quantify these personality traits which were introduced by Jane Goodall. The researchers did that by creating questionnaires for which behavior was classified. Then people who had spent up to 35 years with chimpanzees started to fill out a questionnaire. In order to find out whether this rating is faithful, they compared it to another study which was conducted in the 70s. And indeed it was found that the ratings were similar, meaning that characters are stable and also heritable. So as a result, chimpanzees might have certain personalities. But now back to Jane Goodall's original work. It was also at the time that she made one of the most important discoveries in animal behavior. David Greybeard and another chimpanzee stripped leaves from sticks to collect termites. This was the first time that a researcher observed that animals manipulate objects in order to make tools. This ability to make tools has since been recognized in other animals, including crows, elephants, dolphins or sea otters. We now also know that tool making in chimpanzees is part of a culture. Culture in animals means that members of a community learn behavior from each other. Jane Goodall's work contributed to a comprehensive scientific study where over 40 different cultural patterns were recognized. This does not only include the usage of tools, but also aimed throwing and courtship. For example, in Uganda, chimpanzees from one group use sticks to extract honey, while members of another group use leaves. 
The amazing thing about chimpanzees is that their traditions are given to the next generations. So my recent research is currently trying to find out how flexible this behavior is. Some studies suggest that chimpanzees tend to stick to their traditions, such as the way they find food. Did you get it? They stick to their traditions? Others say that there might be a degree of behavior modification if the food reward is high enough. So there's still some debate regarding this topic. What is more clear, however, is the role of females in maintaining culture. There is a significant correlation between the number of females in a group and the number of traditions. The reason might be that youngins spend up to eight years with the mother. As a result, youngins have a lot of time to learn behavior and culture from the mothers. Another crucial discovery by Jane Goodall was that chimps pursue the prey together. This phenomenon is called corroborative hunting and has been thought to be a unique characteristic of humans. After having made all these discoveries, Jane Goodall moved back to England to pursue her PhD at the University of Cambridge. Eventually she returned and discovered that chimpanzees similar to humans fight wars. She described one war between two groups of chimpanzees which lasted for over four years. During such wars, chimpanzees tend to kill isolated members from the other group. The group seemed to use guerrilla warfare to compete over land, food and females. Did you get it? Guerrilla warfares. I am great today. Okay, this however is something very important. Since mostly single individuals are killed during one attack, this behavior might be very adaptive. It might lead to a slow gain of power while minimizing the risk of damage. But chimpanzees do not only fight wars, but they are also highly social creatures. Chang Goodall observed that an adolescent chimpanzee adopted a three-year-old orphan which was not a close relative. This phenomenon called alamatring is a demonstration of altruism and had since been observed over and over again in chimpanzees. In another study it was observed that an infant was adopted by its grandmother without the death of its mother. This may sound a bit weird, but there might be some evolutionary advantages of such behavior. Although adopting infants might take a lot of resources and energy, it might also lead to stronger bonds with other members of the community. In this unique case, it was hypothesized that the mother called Gaia gave her child to Grandmother Gremlin as it was comparatively weak. Grandmother Gremlin, on the other hand, might have wanted to protect the child from two other chimpanzees which had terrorized Gremlin and her own children in the past. Yeah, chimpanzees just live like people in reality TV shows. That actually also sounds like a good idea. Would you watch that? She also made further observations that maternal behavior is not instinctive. Chimps are taught how to be a mother while they grow up with their mothers. So Chain could have described personalities in chimpanzees, animal culture, war and altruism. Of course, these are not her only contributions to the world of science. In 1977, she founded the Chain Goodall Institute for Wildlife Research, Education and Conservation. Roughly 100 years ago, over 1 million chimpanzees lived in the wild. Today, there are as few as 340,000. While I'm making this video, this institute has helped to protect over 3.4 million acres of land. While the institute initially focused on wild chimpanzees, its work has expanded to protect all living beings. The institute also supports girls to return to school by providing scholarships. As of now, there are over 19 different offices worldwide. The institute has also been involved in several studies which has been presented in this video. So yeah, that's great work. I provide a link in the description if you want to support the Chain Goodall Institute. For her work, Chain Goodall has received numerous honors. This includes the Medal of Tanzania, the National Geographic Society's Hubbard Medal, the Kyoto Prize of Japan, the Benjamin Franklin Medal in Life Science, and the Gandhi King Award for Nonviolence. In 2002, the United Nations named her a Messenger of Peace. Queen Elizabeth II conferred on Jane Goodall the title Dame of the British Empire. I think we can all admire her for her dedications and scientific contributions. So I hope that you enjoyed this video about Jane Goodall, one of the most influential scientists of our modern times. If you want to know more about similar topics such as human evolution or animal behavior, let me know in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button if you're new here in order to stay informed about the latest discoveries in life sciences. And with that, I'll see ya.
Do you want to watch another video about evolution? Then check out the video on the left where we discuss how human mutants became lactose tolerant. If you're more interested in medicine, click on the video on the right. Here we explain how two people were cured of HIV.